Welcome to Savor Indiana. I'm your host, Kevin Gardner, and this week we're heading to Jennings County in southeastern Indiana. The county seat is Vernon, and parts of Jennings County were settled before Indiana even became a state. This was also a stop on the Underground Railroad. History is important to many folks in the area, and we'll talk further about ways to enjoy and explore that history as well as the scenic beauty and bounty of the rolling hills of southern Indiana, the startlingly tasty and tasteful Streamcliff Farm, and an Indiana artist who's using her cutting-edge skills to preserve and encourage a beloved art form. But we start our visit in the city of North Vernon, a community that was designated as one of Indiana's first stellar communities in 2011. A collaborative effort between the Indiana Housing and Community Economic Development Authority, the Office of Community and Rural Affairs, and the Indiana Department of Transportation, the Stellar Communities Designation Program began as a way to assist rural communities in their comprehensive community redevelopment plans. North Vernon Mayor Harold Campbell nearly missed the opportunity to apply for the pilot program. First time I saw that application and, and reviewing it and reading it, I thought the only place it belonged was in a trash can. It went there. I'm glad we fished it out and submitted our nearly $20 million comprehensive plan, which built upon a redevelopment strategy we already had for the community. We had a major opportunity. The 900-acre Muscatuck Urban Training Center attracts thousands of people each year. The center is used for training by many divisions of the military, as well as by police, fire, and rescue agencies from across the country. The Muscatatuck Museum, open free of charge to the public, details the history of the Muscatatuck State Hospital Historic District. It provides an unusual look into Indiana's 20th century public health care system. Jennings County was the first in the U.S to legislate for a free library for its citizens. The stellar designation has been instrumental in assisting the city in leveraging funds to renovate and preserve the 1919 Carnegie Library, refitting it to become the North Vernon City Hall. And a private group stepped up and renovated the historical Park Theater. Now an event and performance venue for the community, as well as a movie house. Mayor Campbell, it was really a pleasure meeting you and visiting Jennings County. I'm excited about seeing the rest of it. For Saver Indiana, I'm Kevin Gardner. I'm James Williams. While there are many agro-tourism venues in the state, it's still a rarity to find a site that includes a winery, restaurant, gardens, art opportunities, crafts, and bedding plants. More than 150 years in the making, Streamcliff Farm celebrates the art and bounty to be found in Jennings County. Betty Manning's family purchased this land from the estate of James Harmon, who passed away in 1863. Harmon's father had received the original land grant from George Washington for his service during the War of Independence. Seven generations have lived on the land, but Betty and her husband Gerald Manning had something new in mind in 1966 when it became their turn to steward the property. Their daughter Elizabeth Manning Riley is now the restaurant manager and culinary instructor. Son Greg Manning is the horticulture manager. Betty and Gerald remain very involved owners. Dad has always been interested in blacksmithing and mom has been interested in primitive arts and crafts and also cooking and growing herbs. They did a lot of craft fairs and then holiday open houses here on the farm. 
and then later built greenhouses for the plants, and then the restaurant started, and then most recently the winery has been added. Looking at Streamcliff Farm as a whole, it's easy to see how the Mannings' love of art, nature, and family have intertwined. Betty is a painter, and Elizabeth is a former high school art teacher. Gerald and son Greg are the winemakers. When you look at the work they've developed, you see how all three are expressed. Betty's green thumb and artistic sensibility seems to have sparked the growth. Her dried wreaths were so popular that she needed annually to grow more and more flowers and herbs. Today, in their greenhouses, the Mannings grow several hundred types of herbs, perennials, heirloom roses, and annuals. Besides selling the plants, Betty designed the six quilt gardens to honor her grandmother, Luella. This has become a popular destination for locals and visitors for reunions and gatherings. Recently, they've added a wedding bridge and sanctuary garden, a small outdoor church. The fairy garden allows children to explore in their own way. The gardens also provide subject matter for many art and craft classes offered each year. The plants figure prominently in another area. Betty's gift for combining herbs with down-home Indiana comfort food had natives clamoring for some of her dill and rosemary chicken salad or raspberry cheesecake to take home. The Twigs and Sprigs restaurant opened in 1995 as a logical extension. In 2006, the family decided to open the farm winery. With a mix of dry, semi-sweet, and sweet wines, there are lots of small batch choices. The label artwork designed by family members features notable Streamcliff equines, with one exception. Their sweet raspberry wine, the Pink Pig, sports a label designed by Betty and Gerald's five-year-old granddaughter. Each part of Streamcliff Farm fits logically with the others to create a cohesive whole of the sights, smells, and sounds of green things growing. When we return, we'll taste their food and wine. Hello, I'm Laura Sheets. Indiana may not be well known for its boulders and hunting attributes, but insiders know where to find them. The Muscatatuck River is the star of the show. Muscatatuck means land of winding waters. Today we're visiting the Muscatatuck Park in Jennings County in the Crosley Fish and Wildlife Area, a DNR facility. In 1921, the state of Indiana adopted the old vinegar stone cutting mill located adjacent to the river and 215 acres to be a new state park. And today, as a Jennings County Park, people are still navigating the twisty, winding river. But the surprising find here is the boulders. The hilly terrain is being developed as an extreme sports area for bouldering, climbing, mountain biking and hiking, even snowboarding in the winter. Some of the walls are three to four stories high. The scenic assets, waterfalls, and river overlooks add to the experience. The Park Visitor Center is even located in the William Reed home, which was built in 1850 from bricks made right here on site by the stonecutter. Visitors will also find both primitive campsites and sites with water, electricity, and even sewer. Many sites have shade, fire pits, and even satellite access. There aren't a huge number, so reservations are recommended and reasonably priced. Hunting and fishing activities can be found quite close at the nearby Crosley Fish and Wildlife Area. Pal Crosley, inventor of auto parts and radios, and the former owner of the Cincinnati Reds, developed the property as a hunting retreat. It was purchased by Indiana's Department of Natural Resources in 1958. Today the area is comprised of more than 4,000 acres of ponds, marshes, and forest. This is a site that is set aside strictly for hunting, fishing, and trapping. Matt O'Neill is the assistant property manager. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources has created many different events to get people involved in the outdoors. The Division of Fish and Wildlife has what they call R&R events or recruitment and retention events. Less than 10% of the North American population now hunts and hunters are the backbone for conservation in America. It's important to protect these populations so that way we can protect them for future generations of Hoosiers. The gun range is newly renovated and very popular, and it's free of charge. Camping and swimming are prohibited and various hunting seasons are observed. 
The county park and state fish and wildlife area are preserving two portions of Indiana's natural heritage. These sparkling vistas and ongoing efforts make these properties open to all of us. Many folks in Jennings County maintain a very strong interest in the history of their community. Today, you can easily find the echoes of the Civil War and the boyhood home that nurtured one of Indiana's legends in this bucolic setting. Formally organized in 1817, several land grants were given to people who had served in the United States War of Independence. A number of families who moved to the area were members of the Quaker faith. You may be familiar with many of the works by local author Jessamine West, a Jennings County native who wrote the friendly persuasion stories, which often focused on the ethical dilemmas faced by people committed to peace who lived in a world that included slavery and bloody civil war. The Jennings County Historical Society, adjacent to the Courthouse Square in Vernon, celebrates the colorful past of this Hoosier community. Located in a former coaching inn, the museum features exhibits ranging from arrowheads to artifacts produced in the community during the 20th century. To better serve the area, the Historical Society offers a wide variety of annual events that help the members of the community celebrate its diverse history. As one of the few Indiana areas to see combat in the Civil War, part of the ill-fated Morgan's Raid in Indiana, and as a stop on the Underground Railroad, the Sassafras Tea Festival, held in April, includes a Civil War reenactment and the Blue and Gray Ball, the Ghost Walk, and Hector's Haunted Happenings Mystery Dinner occur annually in October. These events encourage guests to take a step back in time and better appreciate our shared history. Chris Asher is the curator of the Jennings County Historical Society. Our mission is to present, preserve, and document the county's history. And we can do that through this museum. I think people need to know where they came from so they can better appreciate where they are today. You want to browse around, ask questions, um, get yourself time to tour the town of Vernon, to stop someplace and eat, and get the entire experience. Jennings County is also home to some of Indiana's earliest architectural marvels, including the covered bridges at James and Scipio. Another museum that sheds an interesting light on life in Jennings County is right here in Hayden. Perhaps not coincidentally, Hayden is the hometown of Indiana's 43rd governor, Edgar Whitcomb. Governor Whitcomb and his family donated his boyhood home to the Hayden Historical Museum and a statue was erected in his honor. The family had already donated another building and land to the museum that details how Hoosiers lived in Hayden throughout various decades of the 20th century. Roger Ruddick and Patrick Sullivan are with the museum. We started the Hayden Museum in 1990. At the same time, we started the grade school history club, which includes the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders from Hayden Elementary. We wanted to present a three-year study program for them to learn what they could about the local history. You can tell them stories about the history of the community, but when you relate and give them artifacts to see and pictures to go along with those stories, they better understand and appreciate the local history. Being able to come to this museum and get a feel for what's happened in the past, you really can't know who you are unless you know where you came from. And what better place to start than right here in your own community the museum's Hayden History Days, held annually on the Saturday of Labor Day weekend, allows visitors to stroll through the exhibits, including the transplanted Sinclair gas station from US 50, to pick up a cold soda pop or piece of candy a la La Hayden, 1947. These two organizations provide a bridge to Indiana's past and preserve our heritage 
for generations to come. For Savor Indiana, I'm Kevin Gardner. In North Vernon, a family uses their various talents to add sparkle to the lives of many. Classic Stained Glass is the collaborative effort of artist Lori Underwood and her parents Tom and Ann Means and Lori's husband Mike. Their business is comprised of several multifaceted aspects including preservation and renovation of existing stained glass, design and creation of new stained glass artworks for homes and public spaces, classes, and the gift gallery that houses a whole host of shimmering examples of the art form. I think that people are attracted to the color of the glass first, whether it's blues and greens that make us feel peaceful and calm, or the reds and the oranges that make us feel energetic and vibrant, or if it's just clear beveled glass. And then when light gets behind it, I think it just comes to life. Stained glass is an ancient art form that may have grown out of the use of mosaic tiles in the art of ancient Rome. Many churches in medieval Western Europe used stained glass illuminated windows to tell Bible stories to a largely illiterate public. The metal strips used to hold the glass pieces together are called came. Two different styles of stained glass art use lead came or copper foil. A frequent problem for restorers and designers is the need to create or reinforce a framework that will be strong enough to hold the glass without buckling and that can withstand damage from wind and storms. As well, the soldering that holds the glass and came together must be even and deft so that it does not distract from the overall design. Lori is the chief designer and teacher. Tom and Mike do all of the installations. And Ann manages the store, a shopping destination for lovers of the art form. Routinely, the gallery maintains more than 400 colors of glass and a collection of 500 books of patterns of glass designs are available. Lori renovated the stained glass in the Dove Sharp and Rudisil Funeral Home in North Vernon. She donated a new piece to the historic Park Theater. She's also become known for new pieces she's been commissioned to develop for private collections and other public buildings. A student of the art form for more than 30 years, she's drawn a special inspiration from the Art Nouveau style of the American artist, Louis Comfort Tiffany. Tiffany's style of work incorporated not only the glass and the copper foil in an organic way, as opposed to the old style that was painted glass. And so we try to incorporate that in our designs also, so that when we bring it to people's homes, it feels natural. Lori came to stained glass at a low point in her life when illness forced her to rethink her career path. She believes very strongly in the notion that artists have a responsibility to teach others what they have been taught. She hosts regular classes at the shop for beginners on up. I love to pass on my knowledge. They learn so much at the end of a six week class. They can make stained glass at home, make wonderful things for themselves and for their family. They have a great sense of accomplishment. Ann Means' goal with the shop is to showcase enough different types of the art form to stir the imagination, but at a variety of price points so that anyone can enjoy decorative glass in their daily lives. We carry a variety of things so that anyone can come in and buy something to make their life brighter, to be cheery, and it will last forever, something they can keep forever. For Savor Indiana, I'm Laura Sheets. Streamcliff Farm can provide you with a lot of food for thought. But fortunately, when you get really hungry and thirsty, they can help with those things too. As you might imagine, the high season for a restaurant that prominently features herbs and food is going to be April through mid-October. But special candlelight dinners are held at the Streamcliff Farm's winery by reservation only throughout the year. Winemaker Gerald Manning gave us a brief behind-the-scenes tour before lunchtime. We started at the winery named for Southern General John Hunt Morgan, who visited Streamcliff during the somewhat less than civil war between the states. 
The Twigs and Sprigs restaurant features appetizers, salads, side dishes, sandwiches, and entrees, all highlighting particular herbs and paired with the Stream Cliff Farm wines. Located adjacent to the greenhouses, the interior has been painted by Betty Manning and Elizabeth Manning Riley. We want to make a memorable experience for our guests. When they walk in that door and they smell that fresh bread baking, that's such a great memory for them. We use the herbs that we grow in our greenhouses in our dishes so that each plate that goes out has fresh herbs and an edible flower. We make our wines in handcrafted small batches which make them very unique and very delicious. It's unusual to find a restaurant that will grow their own herbs, bake their own bread, and make their own wine. I wanted to sample several of their flavor combinations. I started with the vegetable medley cheese soup in a fresh baked bread bowl and a taste of my dolly, a Chardonnay with a hint of oak. The crisp green apple and apricot tones of the Chardonnay contrast against the rich, creamy soup. I tried the blueberry walnut salad with the spotted horse Riesling, which is comprised of gorgonzola cheese, grilled chicken, fresh blueberries, caramelized walnuts, red onions, and homemade croutons served with the house creamy blueberry dressing. Salty sweet walnuts and bright fresh fruit. Next up was the tomato mozzarella sandwich with the fancy Philly, a semi-sweet traminette. The fresh baked basil and oregano focaccia is loaded with fresh mozzarella, basil pesto, and tomatoes, with a side of herb chips, of course. The garden-grown basil is juxtaposed against the creamy mozzarella and the sun-ripened tomatoes. I tried the pulled pork barbecue sandwich with rawhide, a dry Pinot Noir with a side of dill slaw. The Pinot Noir has a light acidity that works against the sweetness of the pork and the dill in the slaw. New to the menu is the Streamcliff Third Pound Burger, to which I decided to add some of the house-made cilantro lime mayonnaise. Elizabeth suggested the Running Horse Red, a dry Merlot to pair. I also opted for a side of the birdseed salad. Bacon, cream, spiral pasta, and fresh veggies. Salty, creamy, sweet, with a touch of dill. By the way, during the summer season, visitors can carry out containers of their most popular menu items, but you have to pick them and the wine up by 4 p.m. Anyone who doesn't get enough to eat at Streamcliff isn't trying very hard. The Blackberry Cobbler, with Grandpa's Blackberry Semi-Sweet, their most popular wine. The Chocolate Explosion with the Pink Pig. Sweet Red with Raspberry Notes. And the Family Secret Recipe Bread Pudding with Bourbon Sauce, paired with Sweet Scarlet, their port-style dessert wine. We've had a very educational trip to Jennings County. It's fascinating to find one of Indiana's first stellar communities, as well as the Muscatatuck Urban Training Center and Museum. The Crosley Fish and Wildlife Area and the Muscatatuck County Park provide so many different types of outdoor activities year-round. The Jennings County Historical Society and the Hayden Museum provide context so that we can better understand the founding of our state, Indiana's involvement during the Civil War, and its evolution during the 20th century. Artist Lori Underwood and Classic Stained Glass are opening a window into the world of stained glass for people who want to preserve a beautiful art form, or those of us who just want to add a little sparkle to our lives. And Streamcliff Farm shares the family's history through their art, plants, garden, food, and wine. Thank you, Elizabeth, for a memorable lunch. To learn more about Jennings County, please visit our website at saverindiana.com. Till next time, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>